Hardcore and serious wrestling fans seem to tend to like the villains or the heels more than they do the baby faces or the heroes. This is easy to understand, in particular with today's WWE, because oftentimes the so-called heroes or baby faces are booked as the villains, and the ones that actually have the obstacles to overcome are the heels, the villains. It's much easier to associate with those villains, those heels. It's much easier to get emotionally invested in them. It's much easier to get into what their character is doing. You know, as a, res as a general rule, it tends to be that as a villain, as a heel, you have more flexibility in terms of the things you could do, what have you. But especially, again, when you look at the way WWE's current creative environment is, it's very hard to get behind the heroes or baby faces and very easy in a lot of ways to get behind the villains or the heels. It's the villains that make sense. It's the baby faces, the heroes that don't. I mean, you really want to associate with the guys that you feel that you can most easily relate to. Uh, and that kind of brings me to Roman Reigns. And kind of the notion that a lot of people want him to turn heel, have wanted him to turn heel for a while, think he works better as a heel, and think that time is most certainly now. And the ultimate question to me is, is it indeed time to turn Roman Reigns heel? I understand people's fears about not wanting him to become John Cena 2.0. I understand where people could sit there and say that this guy has quite a ways to go before he really becomes that complete all-around performer that is worthy of a top spot. And as a result... He's not that type of hero or babyface that you really want to get behind, whereas you see somebody like a Dean Ambrose as a guy that's much easier for you to get behind, much easier for you to relate to, and as a result, much easier for you to cheer for. And the dynamics excuse me, of a guy like Dean Ambrose makes him better as a hero or babyface to you right now, where the dynamics of Roman Reigns, and in particular what you feel he represents from a lineage standpoint, from a look standpoint, from a prettiness standpoint, from a physique standpoint, uh, points to you wanting him to be a heel, a villain, because in a way you look at him as a guy that you want to hate because of many of the things you feel that he represents, both real and perhaps imagined. And, you know, I'm one of these people that I don't like to sit there and just say a guy needs to turn heel and that's it and that's that. I think oftentimes that's a lazy way to go about it. It's a lazy way to book characters and a lazy way, frankly, to book professional wrestling or sports entertainment, whatever the hell you want to call it. Sometimes just because it doesn't work initially the way you might envision or the way maybe it should with a guy on one side of the fence doesn't mean you should instantly flip him over to the other side of the fence. Sometimes you just got to stay with it. You got to <laughs> stay the course. Or maybe you have to slightly alter your path and change your direction in order for it to gravitate uh, to that audience, in order for it to connect to that audience, in order to make it work. And then maybe you do get to that point where you have no other choice. And I understand when it comes to being a heel, it's easier in some ways to make a heel in theory than it is a baby face. You know, when in doubt, heal them out, put a suit on them, you know, just have them act a certain way. It's easier to do on the one hand. On the other hand, again, it kind of represents laziness in the creative thought processes of professional wrestling. It really truly does. Just because in theory you could perhaps make everybody a heel doesn't mean you should make everybody a heel. And I also understand the importance of heels throughout the history of professional wrestling. The quality of the villain is what helped make the quality of the hero. And in particular, that villain that had the ability to draw people in and get them to want to part with their money in order to see that villain get his comeuppance, get his ass kicked by the hero, by the babyface. And for a lot of you, especially the hardcore fans, you look at a guy like Roman Reigns, there are a lot of characteristics or traits that you look at him right now as a performer and you sit there and say, I wouldn't mind paying some money or streaming this shit to see him get his ass kicked by somebody else. But I think sometimes this is a bit of an overreaction. Again, just because it's not working initially doesn't mean that you instantly need to change direction. Just because certain segments of the audience aren't fully getting behind the guy doesn't mean that you automatically have to change things. It doesn't automatically mean that you need to knee-jerk react to that other side of the fence with that character. Now, with that said, there is also something to be said about the stagnation of a character. And when you talk about John Cena in particular, this is the epitome, the creme de la creme of stale. 
and stagnant when it comes to professional wrestling characters, perhaps more than any other I've ever seen. This is a guy that has been the exact same performer for a decade now, in the basically exact same spot on the card. There's no change in character, there's no attempt to tell any different type of story, it's always the same thing, the same bullshit, and ultimately the same result. And when you're talking about a guy like Cena, I mean, we're talking about a guy here that's been doing it for a decade on one side of the fence. He still, for Christ's sakes, comes out to the same theme music that he came out to over a decade ago. He's still rocking the same basic type of ring gear and look that he's been doing for over a decade now, just with some different freaking colors. At some point in time, you begin to receive a diminishing return on that character because of the fact that the act wears thin. The act grows old. And you look at somebody like a Roman Reigns, and if you don't want him to be a John Cena 2.0, one of the first things you would think to do in theory would be to make sure that you do something with him that you never did with John Cena when John Cena was a top guy, and that was turn him to the other side of the fence, or at least, if nothing else, do something different to shake up and change his character. So again, is it time to turn Roman Reigns heel? Could we get to that point with him where he starts to stagnate and becomes kind of dull and starts to lose some luster as a babyface, never really fully connects to the level that he should? Or is this a situation where the WWE needs to stay patient and they need to keep working at it and they need to keep hammering away at it and eventually it'll resonate, eventually it'll work. And maybe it's their fault that it hasn't worked with on the babyface side and if they did a better job, then it would work. Well, here's the way I look at it. Is I'm looking at it from a standpoint of trying to envision what that performer, that character would do in the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months in a particular role. See, part of the problem, let's say, with the John Cena continuing to stay on the babyface side of the fence is you continuously get a smaller and smaller window in terms of potential opponents for him to face. And, you know, when you're looking at a guy like Cena, a guy that you put in a position as a top guy, because of nothing else, he is a placeholder for you, and he is just a representation of the shield of the WWE brand, if you will. Well, it's important to have the right type of dance partner so that way you can maximize the amount of money you get out of that prop that is Cena. Well, the WWE, by always keeping them the same and always keeping them on the same side of the fence, they really run into problems at times with coming up with new opponents for a guy like Cena to face. Because on the one hand, so many other guys have flipped sides of the fence in order to face off with Cena. And you're looking at it and there are, just aren't that many guys, especially at that level, that could face somebody like a Cena. So now I look at a Roman Reigns. And I see where he's at as a baby face. I try to envision his path to WrestleMania 32, let's say. That's just one, one length of time, you know, about nine and a half, ten months or so. Where do you go with Roman Reigns? Is it better to keep him on his current path? Or is it better to call an audible and change that path now? What would be the best for the Roman Reigns character? What would be the best for the product? What would be the best for the company as a whole and the business from a bottom line standpoint? Well, when you look at Roman Reigns on the babyface side, I'm starting to wonder if there are limited, limited potential returns with a Roman Reigns on that side of the fence. There is a real lack of quality heels in the WWE right now. And when you look at Roman Reigns as a babyface, let's just try to envision some of the potential opponents you could have for him in the next 12 to 24 months right now if he stayed a babyface. You've got like Seth Rollins, Kane, Rusev, Bray Wyatt, Wade Barrett, Sheamus, Kevin Owens, Triple H, John Cena. And even the one you throw in with John Cena, it just really doesn't matter, I guess, what side of the fence he's going to be on. But you look at that list of opponents over the next 12, 18, 24 months. Some opportunities to do some good business, uh, but are you getting the most out of him? And is this really the best utilization of him and those other characters as well? And let's just take a look at that potential path, let's say, between now and WrestleMania 32. You may be looking at what? If Roman Reigns stays babyface the whole time. Maybe Kane, then on to Seth Rollins, perhaps? Or a heel turn Dean, Dean Ambrose? Maybe at some point in time you get to Triple H. I mean, because you're going to still be, if you're having Roman Reigns on that babyface side of the fence, 
you're going to want to build him up to a big match at WrestleMania 32. And with Triple H, most likely it seems like heading towards the Rock at Mania 32, the next most logical match for Roman Reigns as a babyface at WrestleMania 32 is going to be John Cena in some type of configuration, some type of pattern. It would either have to be for the U.S. title or just be mano y mano, and it wouldn't be able to be for the world title at all unless, God forbid, Cena won the belt for a 16th freaking time. And I look at that path to WrestleMania 32, and I say to myself, Ugh, I don't want to see him feud with Kane. You know, Seth Rollins would have intrigue and interest because there's story there, and they've kind of went back and forth and nibbled at it a little bit here and there. They've pulled the bobber down the water just a little bit, but they haven't gone all in, fully sunk their teeth onto the hook yet. That's one feud, one rivalry that would really work, as would Triple H, and certainly the dynamics of John Cena would potentially work as well. But you're really restricted in terms of what you could do with Roman Reigns if that's the path you keep him on. However, let's say if you have Roman Reigns turn heel, and let's say you did it soon, like as soon as money in the bank. The only way you could do that, in my opinion, is to have him cost Ambrose the briefcase and for Roman Reigns to win the briefcase himself. Now you're talking about a guy, you people are looking for reasons to hate him, You've given them in one night several reasons to now hate him because now not only do they have a lot of animus towards him for winning the 2015 Royal Rumble and main eventing WrestleMania 31, now he's cost everybody's golden boy Dean Ambrose the briefcase and now he's got something else thrown at him in the same year similar to what an ADR did in 2011. And now you look at some of the potential opponents for a Roman Reigns on the heel side of the fence over the next 12, 18 to 24 months. You've got guys like Dean Ambrose. You've got maybe a babyface turn Seth Rollins. And what I'm advocating here is that maybe you would have a double flip at some point in time where Roman Reigns would end up aligning himself with Triple H because in part Triple H is saying, you're supposed to be the face of the company, Seth Rollins, but we've always got to bail you out. What the hell type of face are you? Yet here's Roman Reigns. This guy gave Brock Lesnar a better fight than anybody in quite some time. This guy won the Money in the Bank briefcase. He's the champion. And now you've got off, you've still got a shield dynamic there, but now you can sit there and play off who the real architect of the shield was. Now you've got people wanting to sympathize a little bit with Seth Rollins. It could work. And you can throw guys like Neville in there and Ryback in there as filler feuds. You've always got the Randy Orton dynamic now with Randy Orton as a babyface. That's somebody he couldn't really feud with if Roman Reigns was a babyface. You've got the Brock Lesnar dynamic. And while in theory you could sit there and say it would work somewhat with Roman Reigns as a babyface, You've now gotten to the point where, for a while now anyways, Brock Lesnar is the top babyface in your company, and as a result, he has to work babyface from here on going forward. And the best dynamics for those two to fight would be Roman Reigns as a heel, where everybody could clearly boo him, and then go ahead and cheat your Brock Lesnar if that's what they want to do. You could go with John Cena and do something a little different with Roman Reigns there. You could even at some point in time, looking forward to another WrestleMania down the road with Roman Reigns as a heel, you could go on the family lineage Samoan shit, and you can have him wrestle the rock. When I look at it and I say, let's look at the heel version of Roman Reigns and the most likely path to WrestleMania 32, how do you do it? You've got him winning money in the bank, costing Ambrose the briefcase. Then you can go right into a feud with him and Dean Ambrose. They've been doing so much with teasing them, being buddy-buddy, being friends. The timing almost seems perfect. It seems right to do something there. And you're clearly going to have it established because it's going to be done right, potentially in so many different ways. Ambrose is the guy to cheer, and Roman Reigns is the guy to boo. And oftentimes, when you turn a guy to that other side of the fence, you either want to give them a heater to give them some heat as a heel, or you want to get somebody aligned with them if they're turning babyface that can get the crowd behind them. Well, in this case with Roman Reigns, you've given him the heater in Dean Ambrose in the sense that now everybody's going to be pissed that Ambrose once again didn't get the briefcase and this time it was Roman Reigns that did. It's established. Roman Reigns is instantly over as a heel. And people that are already looking for a reason to boo him and hate him really have their reasons now. And then you could sit there maybe through the late fall, you have him build up to a big match with Brock Lesnar, perhaps with Reigns already as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. You know, and then you've got maybe a Randy Orton that can stem the tide and get you over to WrestleMania to where, again, he could wrestle a John Cena as the heel. Oh, God, who knows how that would turn out. But when I look at this, 
I was of the opinion for a while, actually, and even as I was preparing this video, that I didn't think the timing was right for Roman Reigns to turn heel. And I thought this was just more hardcore, uh, smarky, dribble-drabble, and wasn't really going to be productive to just flip them over to the other side of the fence, especially because it's not like the WWE does a great job of booking their heels anyways. And most certainly, I would still have concerns about how the WWE would book Roman Reigns as a heel. And in a lot of ways, they would have to sit there and perhaps align him with the authority. And, oh, God, that means that storyline would have to continue. However, when I look at the potential path to WrestleMania 32, and I'm wanting to put, let's say, a guy like a Roman Reigns in a big spot, I think the better way to put him in a big spot is by having him flip to the other side of the fence. It also allows you to do something that I think is incredibly important and necessary for Roman Reigns at this point in time, and that is break him off from the shield fully and completely. Let's face it. He's still coming out to shield music. He's still coming out in shield gear. He's still doing the shield entrance. He is still like the living embodiment of the S.H.I.E.L.D. in a lot of ways. And as a result, Roman Reigns has never really established Roman Reigns and what Roman Reigns' character is and who Roman Reigns really is. So now you could sit there and totally flip the script with new music, new attire, a new look, so to speak, a new entrance, you know, a new way of conducting and carrying and presenting himself. That would really help him to establish his own identity. Because I think right now, there is a bit of an identity crisis when it comes to Roman Reigns because he really frankly doesn't have one. And as long as he's doing the same thing as a babyface, which is what he's probably going to continue to do, then you're really setting back that Roman Reigns character, I think both short-term and long-term, because you're just increasing the chances that this character stagnates and stagnates in a big hurry. This is the perfect time to do something different with Roman Reigns, in my opinion. This is the perfect time to go in a di different direction in Roman Reigns' case, in my opinion, at this particular time. You could shake it up. Now you would have, in my situation, my scenario, another member, former member of the Shield winning the world title, therefore further establishing how significant that faction was, which also helps you when it comes time to promote NXT, you're sitting there and saying, Rollins was a champion, Lou Ambrose is, Reigns is a freaking champion, this is why you need to watch NXT. There's just so many things that really work out here, and it feels like in a lot of ways, the WWE wants to go a certain direction with Roman Reigns, and they want to force you to go in a certain direction with Roman Reigns, and I understand sometimes that appealing just to the hardcore fans is the most ridiculous and idiotic thing you could possibly do. But I look at it in this particular case, and I think that all parties involved truly actually benefit the most by having Roman Reigns turn heel. Now, to me, the only way you could do it is to do it at Money in the Bank. I don't think it should be done in the match between Rollins and Ambrose at the Elimination Chamber. I don't think that's quite the moment. I don't think that's the right timing. I really, truly don't. Because I think if you could sit there and wait until Money in the Bank and you do it in the right way, whereas you have him win and then maybe Lesnar comes back and he fights Rollins at Battleground and that's where Reigns cashes in and now he's aligned with the authority. Now you've got Ambrose coming after him. You've got Rollins coming after him. At some point in time, Brock Lesnar, now he's pissed again and he's coming after him. You've set the table very well with that character and with that title situation, in my opinion, for the rest of 2015. So before I was getting ready to do this video, I was of the opinion, no, just need to do a better job with him as a baby face and stay patient, stay the course, and eventually these things can pan out and they can work. But as I prepared this video and as I thought about it more, I am kind of of the opinion that, yeah, now actually, frankly, is the time to turn Roman Reigns heel. You're in a good spot if you're the WWE on the babyface side. You have Cena over there. You have Orton over there. You have Dean Ambrose over there, you have Ryback over there, you have Brock Lesnar over there. Uh, you need some heels. And at this point in time, you know, I don't think you're going that far based off of what you've done with Rusev and Bray Wyatt and Wade Barrett and Sheamus. You know, Kevin Owens is probably a little bit away. What do you do? You need somebody for these different baby faces to work with, and you've kind of, I think, actually reached the end of the road with Seth Rollins as a heel to the point where you need to start entertaining the thought of turning him baby face. I think for so many different reasons and so many different ways, 
the best option for all parties involved is to turn Roman Reigns and turn him heel soon, as soon as money in the bank. 